Good evening, guys. This is your Christmas gift speaking, and uh, actually the study is the gift, but uh, nevertheless, let's talk about the new study. Uh, yeah, we got this uh, blog post summarizing it. I didn't make slides and, as usual because I already wrote a blog post. So we have a new study, uh, Stability of Italian Regional Intelligence Differences for 150 Years, which is uh, just out in Mankind Quarterly by uh, myself and, uh, you know, the illustrious Italian researcher Davide Piffer. And if we read the abstract, uh, essentially it's about the north-south gradient in uh, Italy. As everybody who's ever looked at any kind of uh, Italian map of anything good, they all look like this. Uh, everything is better in the north, uh, worse in the south, kind of the average in the middle, uh, with some, some outliers, some regions uh, don't fit the exact gradient. Nevertheless, the gradient is very strong. There's a, there's a very strong latitude correlation. Uh, and so this, this has been the case since even the Middle Ages. Uh, so obviously the roots must be very deep. Uh, if you look at Renaissance thinkers, they were much more likely to come from the north than from the south. I can't think of a single uh, one from the south. In fact, um, on these big famous trade cities, uh, most of the true stuff is in the north, Venice. Uh, you know, obviously Rome is in the middle, uh, Milan, Florence. The stuff is all, is all up here. And um, so here we have a, a map of three different measures. And uh, the first, the well-being index is a composite of 14 indicators. And uh, so as we've talked about many times, if you take regional data or individual data and you collect a lot, a lot of measures like income and education level and lifespan and all this stuff, you find that they, they tend to uh, correlate positively. So there's a, a sort of a general factor of socioeconomic outcomes, which uh, by popular uh, demand is now being called the well-being index. Um, so, and if you look at that, it looks like this. Second, uh, in Valsi is the mandatory scholastic tests in Italy. And these data are from the last 10 years or so, uh, where you take all these scholastic scores uh, in different grades and in different subjects. And you also do a factor analysis of these, um, which gives you an overall best estimate of their current child level uh, cognitive ability as, as in modern times. And uh, most interestingly, and uh, the new thing about this paper is the age heaping. And age heaping, uh, for those who uh, recall, did I plot it? It looks like this. And uh, age heaping is the tendency of enumerate people uh, to report their own age as a rounded value. And so you can see how it works out. If you are living in the 1800s and you can't do mental math, you don't exactly know how old you are because you're unable to calculate your birth year uh, minus, you know, the current year minus your birth year to get your age. Um, and as a matter of fact, you might not even remember what your exact birth year were uh, or was. And so you see when you look at old census data or current census data from Africa is that you get these big spikes when you look at the self-reported ages. And so you can see here that these are the people who are, I think, 30 years old. And there's tons of people who said they were approximately 30 years old, but we know, of course, these people were not really all 30. These people were more likely to be 29 and 31 and so on. And the same with 40 and 50 and 60 and 70 and even 80. Uh, but you can see also the younger generations, it kind of goes away. So these generations have, have learned more math or at least they can figure out what their correct ages. We also know that kids are much more interested in, in their exact age than adults. And, you know, I even tend to forget my, my own age, uh, but obviously you can calculate it. Uh, the good thing about this is that you can calculate when you have a lot of census data like this, you can calculate the proportion of people who uh, rounded their age. And these are the people who can't do math. And if you are interested in psychometrics, this is a one item IQ test. All right. One item IQ test, pretty bad. Um, for if you're trying to look at individual differences, but if you're just trying to estimate differences between aggregate groups, say between cities or countries, or in this case, uh, provinces, uh, then one item is pretty good. Uh, then you get the, you can calculate the, the, the normal, the z-score uh, for each unit using the reverse or the inverse normal transformation. And you can do some fancy uh, beta regression modeling to uh, also uh, put this in uh, and adjust for the Flynn effect. Obviously, uh, as uh, time goes forward, everybody stops rounding their ages. And so this test becomes useless. It's, uh, it reads the ceiling. Um, going back to that, uh, that's what this map shows. So it shows where people 
were relatively late at learning uh, and slow and, and kind of incapable of doing their own mental ages. And you can see there's a lot of gray units, and that's because, well, these data are from the 1800s uh, Italian censuses, which did not include all parts of the country, and in, in particularly bad, they did not include the, the German-speaking regions of here. Uh, so this is South Tyrol or Sud Tyrol. Um, and uh, so some of these got merged and some of them split. And so the mapping from the old ones to the current ones is not exactly perfect, but it is nevertheless much better than anything else. And as you can see from these plots, the correlations will obviously be quite strong. Um, looking in detail at the S factor we have, or the well-being index, we can see that I was able to compile, where we were able to compile a bunch of indicators. We've got uh, uh, earnings here, hourly earnings, education levels, some air quality stuff, uh, startup per capita, robberies, uh, mortality, and some other stuff. And so generally speaking, the good things have positive loadings. That is to say they're on this side of the plot and the bad things are over here. And so bad payers are, you know, people who go in, uh, who are unable to pay their own debt, who default. Unemployment rate, you know, people don't work. Standardized mortality, dying too much. Infant mortality, uh, kids dying, and so on. Birth rate is, is close to zero, but not exactly so. Speaking of Italy at the province level, it doesn't appear there is much uh, dysgenics, uh, at least at the province level. Uh, one interesting thing is the mortality rate here, which is has a zero loading or so, uh, whereas it should be you know negative as more dying is, is bad. Uh, the reason for this is that the north has more old people and the standardized mortality rate adjusts for age. And once you adjust for age, you get this relationship. Uh, the weird one about robberies here, the other outlier is that um, robberies tend to happen where there's more stuff to steal and uh, that generally speaking means cities and in Italy the immigrants uh, who are above average uh, criminal uh, they go mostly to the northern Italian cities where they can get more welfare benefits, uh, benefits and also steal more stuff. And this tends then to create this weird uh, situation where uh, robbery uh, rates are very slightly associated with uh, the better provinces than the other ones. Uh, it is possible one could adjust for this using an adjustment for population density, but uh, we did not attempt it here and it did not really impact the analysis much. But generally speaking, this kind of uh, anomaly with the S loading happens when the regional units are too large. So if one had, uh, instead of provinces, uh, city districts or communes, uh, then it's quite likely this robbery loading would go back down to being negative as most robberies really do happen in the worst parts of town, even if the town overall is good. Uh, they're in the ghetto parts. Uh, so going forward, we can look at the correlation matrix, which looks like this. Um, as I recall, one of them is weighted. Below the diagonal is weighted um, by the population size, the current population size. And we can see that age heaping and, um, and in Valsi, the current scholastic tests, both of these are proxies for general intelligence, but since you know we do not have exactly that, we're going to use this proxy. They correlate at a very respectful uh, 7.4, and that's kind of impressive considering it's roughly 150 years between these uh, these measurements. And they also correlate roughly the same with the well-being index. So these three measures really really go well together over time. Uh, there's also this other quality of life measure uh, which some Italians compiled and. Um, they used a lot more indicators, but many of these indicators were things like weather and so on, so which we did not include. But we have included here in the matrix just uh, if someone was interested in whether we p-hacked the RS factor compared to the other ones, which, as you can see, uh, we did not. They call it 0.9. Uh, we also see the extreme latitude correlations, which are, in fact, even stronger than these uh, same time measures between uh, well-being, S-factor, and the cognitive scores, the, the latitude correlations are about 0.85. It's uh, extremely strong. Uh, there's also some longitude correlations, but as we'll see, they, they tend to go away, and that's because longitude actually works as a proxy here, where you can see that the more eastern countries are southern, uh, or the, the more eastern provinces are southern, and the uh, more kind of western ones, with the exception of, um, of this island, um, they're over here. Um, so therefore, longitude tends to be a proxy for latitude indirectly. Um, if we then move further on and we look at the plots, we get a plot like this. So these are the current school, uh, school test from 2010s and forward, and the current general factor, the correlation is, is 8.2, which is kind of amazing. There are some outliers, for instance, the uh, Balzano, uh, which is the uh, German uh, part in the north, which is much more wealthy than you'd expect based on their 
kit's current um, cognitive performance, uh, and this is a, somewhat of an outlier. And that could perhaps be explained by uh, being closer to um, Switzerland and to, uh, to Austria, and also being German-speaking, or it could be a, a Germanic thing where the uh, German-speaking population there Though they're not smarter, they have more other personality traits that help with money. Or it could be a legacy thing where rich Germans buy property up there, driving up the values and pushing the entire uh, social status upwards. Uh, otherwise, we see up here Milano, a, a wealthy uh, trade city, uh, which, as you can expect, has some, some city effects. Now, I don't know what's uh, going on with the Benevento and Lecce down here, but uh, I guess uh, someone will tell us in the comments. If we do the same thing, but we look at the achieving scores, uh, now the sample size is reduced to 69. Remember from the map, there was a lot of gray areas, uh, but still we see the, the correlation is, is quite good. Um, it's a 7.8, which is a slightly uh, weaker, but because the sample size has also been reduced by a third or so, uh, this difference is not really reliable. We don't know if that's a real decline or not. Uh, Milano is still up here. Uh, don't see a Bolzano, and that's because uh, there was no achieving for them. There are some other outliers here, which I have no particular explanation for. As I recall, Imperia is some kind of coastal military thing. Um, who knows, maybe the recruits for the, uh, the Navy were not particularly bright. Whatever the exact case, uh, the association is, is pretty good. Uh, and finally, we can take the old uh, cognitive estimates and the modern ones, which in fact call it weaker than this one, only very slightly. And uh, we also get this very nice plot uh, where there's some, some cluster of outliers up here. And so we could maybe speculate that these uh, provinces were slightly faster in implementing public schooling, teaching the kids basic math, or basic math such that they were later as adults able to report their uh, ages more accurately. Uh, whatever the exact case, uh, the association is pretty good considering the, the data limitations. Um, more interesting, uh, if you do regressions and we're interested in predicting um, in predicting the uh, current uh, well-being or the S factor, we can see that, of course, if you plot in the, the geo uh, variables, we see that uh, latitude continues to be very strongly associated and longitude is no longer associated much. And the reason for that is, uh, you know, the proxy has now gone away. Uh, this difference might, in fact, be P05, but... Uh, this table is, uh, it doesn't read the 1% and that's the standard here. If you, uh, interestingly, if you add both the current cognitive of the kids levels and the latitude, actually latitude is a slightly better predictor, though both of them uh, have uh, p-values that are small. And uh, this difference between these two is, is not significant. Uh, so they're basically uh, unexpectedly battling it out and um, we would expect from a a cognitive sociology perspective that uh, latitude is essentially a proxy for cognitive ability, but we find that in Italy this is not the case. Um, latitude itself has some other association that makes it uh, predict uh, the well-being of uh, provinces beyond its association with cognitive ability and, and with longitude and, and this. Um, and that is that is very interesting. You no, know? um, it's kind of mysterious. Uh, as I mentioned before, this can be due to the Northern Italians having other traits uh, that make them more productive and so on um, than the Southern Italians. Um, that is not reflected in the intelligence uh, or the scholastic ability, but, but would be if you had some other measures, such maybe honesty measures or work ethic or, or something like this. Um, the results are, are similar if you do it with age heaping, just the sample size is smaller, so the position is also uh, worse. And we see that longitude predicts by itself as before, uh, sort of latitude predicts as itself, longitude uh, does not much, well, it is slightly significant. And invalsi works, and if you put them together, then invalsi is, uh, is no longer significant. Uh, actually, this is a mistake, there should be age heaping there. Um, that's bad. Uh, this is uh, age heaping. Um, and um, latitude really beats it here, but because the, uh, the standard error here is uh, 0.13, really large, uh, we cannot really be sure whether this this value might actually need to be somewhat uh, larger and this value smaller. Uh, probably the sampling error is also large in this ancient data. And as we know from statistics, if you have a measure that's measured with error 
and you have another correlated variable, the validity tends to be moved to the correlated variable insofar as the error is concerned. Uh, so I wouldn't really take this as proof or strong evidence that age heaping doesn't predict uh, even in the old data. It's maybe something to do with chance and uh, with this uh, with its error and the age heaping. Um, so that's that's essentially our main findings is that uh, the 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 stability of these results are, are very high and that that tends to rule out uh, certain alternative explanations for instance if it merely has to do with where you started putting factories and so on this this data uh, is so old it goes back before uh, there were a lot of factories in the north and so clearly the the northern people had an advantage even in the mid 1800s and as i mentioned in the beginning when you look even go back to the renaissance uh, the northern people still had an advantage there uh, so hopefully soon they will sequence a lot of old genomes and we can see whether the polygenic scores are also higher in the north um, in very old data from the Middle Ages or even the Roman times uh, than in the south. And this would show that the, the origin of this, of this uh, latitude decline goes back even further and therefore cannot be explained by any current sociology uh, explanations. Um, and uh, concurrent with our paper that was published uh, Richard Lin, he also found some more data. Let's scroll down to this. And it's in the same issue of Mankind Quarterly. And um, for those wondering if you want to read Mankind Quarterly, you simply click these links and you click download. You don't need to log in or anything. Uh, it's all public insofar as ResearchGate is concerned. Uh, and what, what Richard Lin found is uh, he found one more study, this uh, study by Shmirmi, which gave the, uh, the colored progressive matrices, that's what CPM means, uh, to uh, a bunch of kids aged uh, 6 to 11. And they, in the south uh, Sicily, uh, obtained an, an IQ of uh, 92, which is, you know, uh, close to what the other studies found in Sicily. There are two other studies. One found 90, one, the other found 88. So if you average all of these, you get 90. The IQ seems, therefore, to be approximately 10 points lower in Sicily than uh, in, a, in a typical um, Northwest European population. Um, this uh, buoy study should be uh, disregarded. Where is it? Yeah, this one should be disregarded. Um, that's also concurrent uh, because six months ago, uh, also Davide and also Lin and also Mankind Quarterly um, reported the polygenic scores for the uh, current Italians. And uh, you have to compile them from some different data sets. Here we have the, the Human Genome Diversity Project and the Thousand Genomes and GNOMAD and uh, some, some Italian data. Uh, and this, the rank order is not exactly correct, uh, maybe because the arrays and give some weird biases, but nevertheless, we find that uh, the northern regions are higher. So these, these four ones here, they're all in the north. Uh, the only weird outlier is this northeast one here. I don't know, maybe they recruit some weird people from some, some village in the mountains that has been brain drained. Uh, maybe it's just sampling error. I don't know what the explanation is, but uh, the other ones here, uh, south, south, and this one is in the center, this one. So essentially, aside from this outlier, uh, the pattern fits in the modern data such that the, the genotypic means uh, for uh, EA4 here, so educational attainment, which we take as a proxy for intelligence, uh, and is, in, as a matter of fact, genetically correlated 0.7 or so with intelligence, they, they show the same gradient uh, as we see from, from the old age heaping data and as we see um, with the modern invalidity data and, of course, all the well-being data and even the Renaissance data. Uh, so this is our uh, current uh, uh, working project with Italy and uh, soon we will be, uh, well, soon, uh, currently we're working on ancient Roman uh, genomics, which I think is extremely exciting. So you better stay tuned for that. Uh, have a nice Christmas.